Gather all your awareness right here. Focus it on the breath coming in, coming out. And stay with the breath coming in, coming out. When you do this, you're developing qualities in the mind that you're going to need for all kinds of activities. You're developing mindfulness, the ability to keep something in mind, and alertness, the ability to notice what's going on, especially what's going on in your own mind. Many times we know what's going on outside, but our own mind is doing all kinds of things that we're only barely aware of. And yet they come out and they have a huge impact on their lives. So we've got to do something to be alert to them so we can tell when a little bit of greed is coming in, be, catch it before it becomes a lot of greed, or a little bit of aversion or a little bit of delusion before it becomes a lot of aversion or a lot of delusion. We have to look after ourselves. We have to be our own protectors because there's nobody else who's going to be able to watch after these things for us. This is why the Buddha taught us that you know, the, the self is its own mainstay, not dahyata na, na to. You yourself are your own mainstay, your own protector, because you're the one who can protect yourself from doing harmful things and then having to suffer the consequences. And the Buddha said, of course, you can't be a protector unless you learn how to train yourself to be a protector. Otherwise, you just go around totally unprotected. If you're not keeping track of what you're doing and have a good sense of what you should be doing, this is why he set out a list of ten protecting qualities that we can develop in ourselves, which enable us to be our own protectors and keep us really safe. Last week we talked about the first one, which is virtue, the ability to make up your mind you're going to avoid unskillful behavior, then stick with that decision. The second one is learning a lot of dharma. How does it protect you? Well, you learn the dharma. It doesn't mean you just listen to it, but it also means that you try to memorize what you can, and then you think about it. So that when difficult situations come up, you've got something to draw on. All too often we memorize all, all kinds of things that are of no help to us. Lists of this, lists of that. Sometimes we memorize songs. Sometimes we just repeat the songs over and over, and they, they get implanted in the mind. But can those things really help you? More often than not, they give you all kinds of wrong ideas. This is why the Buddha has you memorize some of the Dharma, like when we do the chants in the morning. Some of those chants are really important to memorize. For example, we have that reflection on birth, aging, illness, and death, things that people don't like to think about, which is why the Buddha has us memorize it, to keep it in mind. Why is that? Because he said you reflect on the fact that you're subject to aging, subject to illness, subject to death, subject to all kinds of separation from all the things you love, all of which sounds pretty negative. Those are just the first four. The fifth reflection, though, is to reflect on the fact that your actions are what shape your life. So this is where you should focus your attention. What are you doing right now? Is it skillful or unskillful? Is it going to harm you or help you? Is it going to harm other people or help other people? You don't want to do anything harmful. Because you know if you do, then that's going to come back at you more and more harm for yourself. So you want to keep this in mind, reflect on this. It's good to have it memorized so that it comes up in the mind every day. And then reflect on what it means as you go through the day. What's important today? You could die today. Are you ready to go? Work on the things that are really important to get together, i.e. the state of your mind and all the other defilements that may be coming in and out of the mind. What can you do to keep them from moving in and taking over, say, when death comes or illness comes or aging comes, or when you're separated from the people and things that you love? You can provide yourself with a protector through your actions. So this is why the Buddha has you remember things like this and think about them. All too often as we chant them day after day or week after week, we become like little parrots, just saying the words but not really thinking about them. The Buddha wants you to reflect on them. And when you reflect on it, then you get your act together, basically. You get more and more careful about what you do and say and think, because you realize this is the important area of your life. Other things are not under your control, but your decision as to what you want to do or say or think. Whether it's going to be skillful or unskillful, that's your decision. So you want to make the most of it. So this is why the Buddha has you reflect on this every day. You reflect further on the fact that it's not just you, everybody, wherever you go. People are subject to aging, illness, death, and separation. You're dealing with people who are subject to suffering wherever you go. Keep that in mind. Treat the people with some compassion. At the same time, when you see someone that you're jealous of and you remember, okay, they're subject to aging, illness, and death too. They're going to be separated from all those nice things they've got too. That way you can overcome your jealousy. There's a lot of good things you can learn by this kind of reflection. So you listen to the Dharma, try to remember it, and then reflect on it day after day, because that's what it's for, is to, for you to reflect on and then use in your activities day after day. 
This way you learn how to be a protector for yourself. You've got this body of knowledge, you've got this body of principles and values that you can draw on when you need it. So this is one of the ways in which you become your own protector. The Dharma has been set out by the Buddha and all the Ar his Arahant disciples. It's there for us to pick the flowers that they planted and then keep them with us. Because they're not just nice, pretty little flowers, but they're actually messages from the past. And what people have learned that these are good things to keep in mind as you face the difficulties of life. So try to keep this point in mind and listen to and reflect on the Dharma as much as you can. <laughs>